what changed for you that you went from not making those underage teams and what would you say to any young lad now who isn't who's a massive interest but is struggling to make the team at home yeah i i just my, i remember my mother often said to me that when i was a young fella that uh just i used to have welts in my hands from hurling and i used to live i'd have hurl in my hand all the time um as soon as i come in and have the have the dinner, I'd throw the bag in the corner of the school books and I was gone out the door and I was hurling, hurling, hurling. Couldn't hit the ball off my right side till I was maybe 15. But that's, I went out and I just done all that on my own and I just practiced as much as I possibly could. Snuck back up to the schoolyard, got the green tennis ball, pulled the cover off and because it was faster to move it, the rubber underneath, and I just whipped that ball around the place and I just loved it. And I got, I suppose, I suppose between the age of 16 and 19, I probably just started to develop a little bit better. And I just, I actually, that's when I met my club team, my club team first when I was 19. Uh, I nearly lost it, as I said, when I was 20 before that county final in 89. <laughs> 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 you know. But it was great, it was great times. Yeah, yeah it's, it's gas though. And Niall's probably, journey is probably a lesson to any player to just to persevere, isn't it? And just stay practicing. Um, yeah. you never you never just never know when it'll click if you keep doing the work it's like anything even if yeah. you're injured or something like that and you keep doing the rehab you don't think you're getting better and then all of a sudden bang it's all, all the work kind of pays off and it's gas even yeah. chatting to and we were saying it to Shane before and I had Joe Canning and was asking about does he practice the sidelines now or like you know did he always practice them and he said you know most of the work was done 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and then just top up on it but those years are where you can make massive, massive progress. And massive. you have a lot of time. You're not working. Um, you mightn't be studying too much. <laughs> You're studying harder yeah. more, than, more, than, more than anything else, you know. So that's yeah. kind of the one lesson to young players, just to keep persevering and keep practicing and keep trying. Because if you do, you'll eventually make the breakthrough. Well, I, I think one, one huge, I, I would have often said it, Michael, that one huge important thing for coaches, and particularly if you, if you see a young fella who absolutely loves it and is not making the team. And he could cry when he's not picked and he's not brought on because he's poor, but he loves it. He's first at training. He's always at training. Stick with him. You know, look, keep that young fella in, keep him beside you, keep encouraging him because he will make it, you know, because he loves it so much and he'll keep practicing. And that's just what I done, just, just from my own experience. And, just persevere with him and just keep telling him one day you're going to make it. Get him to take freeze. Get him out in the sideline. Cut line balls. And I guarantee you it'll make it. It was the greatest lesson that for me personally. But I would often, even today, look out for young lads like that. And I'd, I'd see a young fella maybe like that. And I'd have a word with the coach or whatever it be. Just to say, watch that young fella. You know, because don't lose him. You know, because you, you could just one little word of encouragement. And you could spark something into him that could really transpire to something good in years to come.